I bet you are here because you were so excited to start using Cursor AI to write .NET code, but you can't debug it. And once we try to do it, we can see here the message saying that .NET debugging is supported only in Microsoft versions of VS Code. So let's change that. I will show you exactly the steps that I took to allow me to debug .NET code on my Cursor AI. And I will show you the process that I took on my machine. So it's important to say that I'm using a MacBook with an uh, M2 silicon processor, but you can follow the same idea if you are using another type of device. And if you want to take a look into another video that I have that I will link in the top, where I explain a different approach in case you are using Windows, it might be interesting for you. But now let's see how I have done it. This is a fresh installation of uh, Cursor AI. And as you can see here on the extensions, I don't have anything installed. I don't have anything basically for this example that you'll be uh, doing. So what I'm going to do first is to create a new project. So let's do the .NET new console. And let's open exactly that project here on Cursor. Okay, and this is the source code that we have. So what we want to do now is to set a breakpoint. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we will install the extension with the name C Sharp. So is this one, mes.net tools, C Sharp. Install it. And now cursor will ask if on that project that we have opened, if we want to add the missing elements to build and debug, and we'll say yes. What will happen if we go back into the project is that now we have this VS Code folder with the launch and the tasks.json. With this, now we can set a breakpoint. However, if we try to run the debugging, so we start the debugger, and once we try to do it, we can see here the message saying that um, .NET debugging is supported only in Microsoft versions of VS Code. So that means that Cursor doesn't have the license to use the debugger that we just tried to use by installing that extension. And that extension will create that tasks.json and the launch.json that will try to start that project using the VS debugger. And I also like how funny it is that it suggests to use Visual Studio for Mac. Don't use it. So what we are going to do, the good news is that Samsung as a debugger that is open source for .NET. And we can take advantage of that. However, let me tell you one thing. If you are using something like Linux, the one that you, you can grab from here likely will work. If you are on the same scenario as I am trying to use something like uh, a silicon device with a uh, MacBook M1, M2, you will have some challenges because it will not attach the debugger, at least from my experience. But let me explain what you can do if you are in a different type of machine. And then I will explain you what I have done to get the version for Mac OS. So knowing that, let's go to the first step. The first step is to download this debugger into our machine. If you are using Linux or Windows, go here into the releases, find the most recent release and grab the version for your platform. It's just a zip file. If you are on Mac OS like I am, what you will do is that you'll go into a different repo. Before we keep going, let me tell you that I will keep all that information, all those links, configurations that you'll be doing, on a project, I will have a readme file there and you can grab that project using the link that you can find in the description. So let's keep going. Here, um, if you are on Windows or uh, Linux, just come here into releases and uh, download it. If you are on Mac OS, you will go into a different repo. And you might ask why? Because if you are using OS X in an ARM64, so a silicon device, there's no asset for that. You can download it. So there's an open issue for that. It's still open. And the good news is that there's community support for that. So there's someone in the community doing that. It's not part of Samsung repo, but it's in another repo. So instead, we are going into a different repo, this one that I will link on that readme that I mentioned before. And here we can go into the releases and let's download the version for ARM64. So download it to your machine and unzip it and paste it somewhere in your machine, somewhere where it's easy to access it. So I have pasted it here under my user 
and I will need the path of this uh, folder in a moment, but we'll get back once we need it. So what we need to do next, let's go back into cursor. And now what we're going to do is that we are going to that launch.json where we currently have two configurations to launch the project. So we have the attach and the .NET Core launch console. And what I'm going to do is that I will create a third one and I will keep it here so you can compare them if you want to see the differences. So here it is. And what we have here, we have a new configuration for debugging. And to this one, I gave the name Netcore DBG. So you know, is this the one that we are trying to create? All configurations still here, they are exactly the same that you can find here on the top. Where things become different is on this pipe transport, because here I will define that I want to start a new debugger, a different debugger. And I will basically do it by saying, okay, this is to run a bash command. I will run a given executable and I want you to take a look into the results and use it as if you were VS Code, because in fact you are, you are cursor. And here, what we want to set is the path to the debugger that we'll be using. So we go to that folder that we download it and we unzip, look for the netcore dbg that you have there, and you will want to grab the path to that file. Paste it there. And this is the thing that you will try to run in order to, to have the debugger. So instead of using the one that comes with the extension, we'll be using this one. You still need the extensions, by the way. So now let's try again. We have the breakpoint in place. Let's go to our run and debug. Pick the profile for the net core dbg and try it. Now, if you are on macOS, you will get an error, basically because Apple doesn't trust the thing that we just downloaded, and it's fair. So it says that Apple could not verify that uh, this thing is not um, malware. So we need to make our operating system to trust the debugger. So let's say done. And once you say done, go into this window on your configuration. So go to the settings, privacy and security, look for the security section, and there you will find this message right here saying that it was blocked, right? So what I'm going to say now is that I will allow to use it. Here I will cancel it and I will try again, but it's it will not work yet. So we try again and now is um, complaining again and I will say, okay, open anyway. However, that's another file that it tries to open. It can't, so you say done. Before you say done again to a different file, go back into the settings, say that you allow it. Done to the next one, go back to the settings, allow it. So let's run it again. Same thing, open anyway, set the password, and here we go. And if we scroll down, we have a debugger running and it's stopping on our breakpoint. What is great. So let's just do something a bit more simple like this. Start the debugger again. And once it stops, you can see in the breakpoint that you can access the variables. You can see the locals here on the left. You can create the watch like add the two here. All of that good stuff that you know. So we can still go with step overs and all of that stuff. So finally, let's just do one thing. Let's comment this logging so you don't see too much noise when you are running this. Okay, and you can see it's still working. Keep in mind that this is not the same debugger used on Visual Studio, so it might find some differences or eventually some issues, but it's working, it works quite well. I never had a problem, to be honest. And this is how you do it. I will leave here a file with all the links that we have used. So if you want to grab this information and also have quick access to these configurations, you can do it for free. You can find the link in the description. Please let me know in the comments if this worked for you or not. And if you have any other type of thing that you like to see using cursor with .NET that I can come up with a video as well. And in meanwhile, you might want to watch my first reaction to start using cursor and how impressed I was at the time. And you can find it right here. And I will see you in the next one.